Good morning and welcome to Frinton Gospel Chapel online service. Thanks for tuning in. I've been thinking as restrictions are being lifted that it's going to be so nice to be able to sing in church again. And one of my favourite hymns is Great Is Thy Faithfulness. And I didn't know much about the history of Great Is Thy Faithfulness, like who wrote it. So I looked it up, did a bit of Googling, and I found out that um, it was written by a man called Thomas Obadiah Chisholm. Great name. He became a Christian at the age of 27 and a pastor um, when he was 36. Um, He wrote hundreds and hundreds of poems. He um, did suffer with ill health and was on a low income. But he was grateful to God, and as he put it, for his many wonderful displays of providing care. And I thought, how true that is. Um, When you look at the words of great is thy faithfulness, it's, um, let's have it go. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not, as thou hast been, thou forever will be. And... It's not a bad hymn to memorise and and take to your heart because um, every morning, um, his faithfulness, we can see something of God's faithfulness. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to singing in church. Um, It's great that we can do online as well as church. So um, I just pray that God will bless you this morning. Uh, Let's worship.
melody of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like Yeah.
Good morning, FGC family and friends. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for who you are and all you have and continue to do for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful that we have the privilege of walking in your presence every day. We thank you for the truth of your word when the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You will not allow our foot to slip. Our protector will not slumber. Behold, our protector will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is the shade at our right hand. The sun will not strike us by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard us from all evil. He will preserve our soul. The Lord watch over our coming and going, both now and forevermore. Lord, this is more than we deserve, and we are humbled by your grace and your love for us. We pray today for your protection as we continue this journey out of lockdown. Give us the desire to want to meet together again as a body of your people, that we might worship you, encourage one another, and be your presence in our community. We lift up those who are unwell and having treatment right now. We ask that you will put your healing hands on them, Lord. We pray for the bereaved and the lonely. May they find comfort and encouragement in you and in your people. We thank you for the message from your word today. Holy Spirit, help us to listen to it and to live it out in our lives that we might be effective in our witness for you. Help us to be your hands and feet and voice wherever we go and whatever we do, to show others the love and compassion that you have shown to us, to bring light where there is darkness, peace where there is conflict, healing where there is hurt and pain, love where there is hate, and unity where there is division. We praise you, Lord, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. We know that full well. All praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to you, our God, for ever and ever. Amen. Have a good week all. Bye. We come to our time of communion. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 6, where people sought out Jesus and asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The invitation to join in communion this morning is to each and every one of us who has come to the Lord Jesus Christ, put their trust in him and desires to serve him. It is a reminder and a celebration of all that he has done for each one of us who are members of God's family by inheritance through the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to this table not because we must, but because we may, not because we are strong, but because we are weak. So come, not because of any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and you would desire to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. At the time of the Passover celebration, Jesus was with his disciples, 
when and we read in Luke's gospel that Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let's pray. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life and ministry, announcing the good news of your kingdom and demonstrating its power by lifting up the downtrodden, healing the sick and loving the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross, for the redemption of the world and for raising him to life again as a foretaste of the glory we shall all share. We give you thanks for this bread and wine, symbols of our world and signs of your transforming love. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that we may be renewed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and formed into his body. We pray this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Can have a, just a, a brief moment of silence when we can think of our own lives and our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember all of those things that he's done for us and continues to do for us day by day. And we bring before him the shortcomings in our lives, the things where we know we've done wrong. And we bring them to him and ask for his forgiveness. We ask for his understanding and we ask for his wisdom. Jesus took the bread and he said, this is my body, which is for you, and do it in remembrance of me. And he broke it and he gave it to each one of his disciples that they may remember that particular act of him giving his life for each one of them and for us. And after the supper, in the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And now our final prayer. Father, we thank you again that we can remember the Lord Jesus Christ in this particular way. We thank you that he opened the gates of glory for each one of us. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to this world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi everyone, um, I'm going to be doing a short um, talk today on a very famous psalm, Psalm 121. And the reason why I chose um, to do a little talk on this particular psalm was because um, I was actually cleaning um, and I was looking down and I was hoovering. And then um, I really felt like God just had said the words to me, look up. And it just reminded me of Psalm 121. And when we are um, feeling a little bit low or we're in a tricky situation or we feel stressed 
or um, everything is against us. I really feel like God just wants to say today, look up, look for me, see me, um, and I will help you through. So I'm just going to read the whole psalm, and then I just wanted to break down a few um, verses in it, and we'll look at those a little bit more specifically. So, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Um, This is probably not the first time that you have heard this psalm. Um, It's used quite a lot, isn't it? Especially when um, we're finding life a little bit tough. Um, The first thing that I just wanted to take from this is the first little section which says I lift up my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord and um, that suggests that the person David in this case us whoever may be in this situation is in a valley is in the the depth and they're looking um, upwards and they're seeking God and it tells us to do that it tells us to look up and to find him. In the tough times, God can break you out of that. God can take you up to the mountain, to the higher place, to um, be with him. Um, it always amazed me, this just reminded me, it amazed me when um, we lived in Brazil for a short time when I was younger, that the children and the families that would come along to the school there, um, how much they would worship, pray, smile in the presence of God um, when they came from such poverty and such horrific circumstances and they would look up they would see their God and they it would fill them with hope and with joy and with peace and that really um, resonated with me and for the rest of my life because um, I'm not in such a dire situation as they were And how often do I find my hope and my peace in God? It challenged me um, to do that when I'm feeling like I might be in the valley. And if you're in the valley today, um, I would encourage you to look up. I would encourage you to seek God and he will um, pick you up and take you through. And that might be a long journey, might be instant. It's um, we never know with God, do we, how he's going to approach it but um the hope is there and that is an incredible encouraging thing isn't it so that was the first thing I just wanted to pull out the second thing um was the next bit where it says he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber indeed he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep and I just got the idea that he's just never gives up he never leaves and he is always faithful. Uh, Time and time again we see this with the Israelites in the Bible. They would give up, they would find other means, they would get fed up and God was always there. He was the constant, keep bringing them back, kept bringing them back. And we see this with the disciples as well, with Jesus, don't we? They have doubts, they have fears, they don't understand what's going on and Jesus doesn't give up on them even though they may have done a few times on him. He never gives up on them. And I think this really resonated with me as well when I was reading it, because I, I for a few weeks I've been, I've been saying, God, where are you? What are you doing? I can't hear you. And, it just made, and then it just hit me in the face that I, I haven't really been seeking him, to be honest. I haven't really been praying enough. I haven't been um, doing a devotion. Um, I haven't even just been sat waiting and listening to what he wants to say. And I think 
Um, giving him the time and the space is important in our lives, isn't it? It's not easy, but it's important. And I think um, we will find him in those times, even though we um, sometimes forget, or I um, definitely forget to do that. <laughs> and he constantly has to remind me to come back to that. And it just it just made me realise how faithful he actually is he did it in the bible over and over again and he will do it with us as well that is our god he stays around he is a constant in an ever-changing world and uh, again that is another massive encouragement to me hopefully to you too and the next bit i found a little bit tricky it says the lord watches over you the lord is your shade at your right hand the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night and I think it's hinting here at like nature and possibly natural disaster, example, flooding. And it says that um, the sun will not harm us by day, nor the moon by night. And it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because especially recently, we've seen so many natural disasters, the fires in Australia, the flooding we've seen recently. And it's really... Um, difficult to hold um, strong on that and to um, believe that our God um, cannot, doesn't bring harm and sometimes we get frustrated, we get angry and we sometimes take that out on God because we don't understand why these things are happening and I think what I took from this is that we will go through difficulty always, there's there's always things in our life that will um, cause us harm, and some more than others. Sometimes you see people going through things over and over and over again. You think, oh, when's it going to stop, God? When when are they going to have a freedom from what they're going through? And it is hard, and it is probably the hardest question that we will as Christians get asked. Uh, why, why does this happen if your God is around? And... Um, I don't think we can always fully understand ourselves um, why some things happen. But what I took from this is that God um, lifts us out, doesn't he? He, um, he takes us through even those um, times. And he um, gives us the peace, the joy, um, the coping mechanisms to be able to deal with the things that life throws at us. And I, we were talking about it in house group a while back that we it's, it's difficult to, under, to fathom how people might go through life without the hope um, of God through the things that they may be dealing with and um, making sure that we always look to him and look up to, um, to get that from him and to get that peace and to get that strength mainly, to get that strength to go through life and hit those harm things. And he promises that he will be with us and he promises um, so he won't let those things affect us. And I think that we can hold tight to that promise um, as we see all these things going on in the world. Um, and finally, um, the last little bit says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. And that reminds me of Psalm 139 as well, where he promises um, well, he tells us that he's there from the beginning, that he sees everything that we do. And unlike um, jo- or like Jonah tried to do in the Bible, he tried to run away, didn't he? And he tried to get away from God. And it was obvious then, and it still is now, um, that we can't escape him. We can't hide um, all the bad things in our life that we don't want him to see. We can't hide them from him. He He knows all and he watches over us. And I think this is really encouraging that he'll watch over your coming and your going. And I love the phrase that we use about God going before us um, into places. I've been really um, encouraged this year that um, as as I was going back into work, into school, um, I only had to do, I only work in a school two days a week at the moment. Um, and... But it was um, quite nerve wracking going back after everything, after the, especially after the first lockdown when everything was still a bit unknown and the virus was still very present. And and um, I kept praying on my journey to work, God, go before me, 
God, go into that place, um, set set it up um, there for safety, for my classes, for a time of joy, back together in the classroom. And I really saw the presence of God in that um, place. Um, so I'd encourage you to do the same. Pray God into the situation before you get there. Um, he will be watching over every aspect of our life. He isn't going anywhere and he's always present. And um, what an encouraging thing to hold on to in our Christian walk with God. And I don't know, it's quite a simple um, message, but I I don't know about you, but I often need reminding that he is um, there and that he is with us. And sometimes when I feel like I can't tangibly hear or um, feel what's going on in a situation we can still trust um that he is there we're just to share a little bit of um testimony um through this because i've been a bit on a bit of a journey of trust the last um few weeks to believe that he is there and he won't bring harm um some days it's been really really difficult to to feel that (laughs) um uh it's we've basically sold our house and um we haven't really found anything to go to and um for one that is a scary thing because this um is my grandparents house uh was my grandparents house it's been in our family since the 1950s at some point and it was really hard to let go of all the memories in this house all the all the meetings that my granddad used to hold in the living room, my grandma, um, all the family events that we've had here and the fact that we have now lived here for the last nine years and had our babies here. And it's um, it's a special haven. It's a special place um, in our family. But we really felt um, a bit of restlessness that God was telling us to, to move on um, to see what else we could find there's a few issues that we were experiencing and we wanted to um yeah move on and so we we put our house on the market on the Thursday by the Sunday it sold it was all a bit crazy and um and yeah I just want to share a little bit of testimony that obviously it's in early days so we don't know what's going to happen but um we really felt the presence of God in that whole situation and we had um three people wanting to buy the house and we finally made a decision on this lovely young family and just to share what God um did in that situation there was a lot of our family praying about what what decision we should make and who we should go with and we finally decided to go with this uh family and um they 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 came around and they looked around again and they they really liked it and then the the guy said can I bring my parents round um to see the house as well and we said yeah sure so the next day he comes with his parents and the mother and mother walks in the door um and she says wow what a blessing and um straight away felt the presence of God like he's um he's involved in this decision he's involved in what's going on here And um, she walked into the living room and she said, you know what, yesterday we were down uh, when our when our when our son and our daughter in law were looking around the house. We we were um, down at our beach hut and we were praying um, about what was going on. Turns out they're Christians. And we just really felt that through this whole uncertain time and this time where I'm being emotional because I've got this emotional attachment to the house, God was saying, I'm here, I'm in it, trust me. And every time I've had a little panic, like we've sold our house, we've got nowhere to go. Um, God has said the words to me, trust me. And I've felt that every time. So I don't know what's next and I don't know what's in store. But um, just as an encouragement that we can always rely on him to take us through. And um, I'm sure lots of you will have many pieces of testimony in your life where God has been faithful even through the uncertainty. And and, um, this isn't even a horrific time I'm going through. And obviously some people are going through very terrible bereavement and really, really difficult times. And 
just to be able to hold on to the hope of God and to bigger things and to the Father in heaven and um, him within us as well and the Holy Spirit is such an incredible, incredible hope um, for us all. And so, yeah, that was the message that I just wanted to to bring today, that he is with us, he is not going anywhere, he is faithful and we need to look up and to seek him first.
that's the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us. I pray that you have a blessed week. And um, I just want to read to you from Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 23, which is where Thomas Obadiah Chisholm got his inspiration for his great hymn. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And on that note, we leave and see you again soon. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.